All right, Andre. Uh, yeah. Has anyone ever told you you look sort of like John Travolta? Yeah, I actually get it a lot. You get it a lot? That's When's the last time you got it? Uh, these two older ladies. Uh, Cougars, we call uh, those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, look at him lit up. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably downtown. They were nice. Ago. They were nice. Very good. Yeah. More car questions, Felipe. Oh, I got I got Oh, come on. What's going on, Sarasota? My name is Brad Hannon. Trey Martel. Felipe Colon. And we've got a great guest with us here, a fast guest. Uh, we got Andre from DMA Tuning. How you doing? DME good, good. Tuning. DME What's going tuning. on? Good so, seeing uh, you, man. That's Andre with a J at the end. Andre with a J. It's Where Andre. Where does the J come from? Uh, Serbia. Oh. Well, it's silent, so it's absolutely pointless. <laughs> <laughs> Andrej. Yeah. yeah. My so, life. I mean, I like it. I think it separates you from the other Andres that are not yeah. from Serbia, right? We're going to let Felipe start it off because he's the car guy on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I le- listen, Brad does a good job starting things off. I'll let him get into it. I don't like to ask the simple questions. I want the more. Oh, ones. yeah. The, the, the low hanging <laughs> fruit is too easy yeah. for Felipe. Uh, well, it's easy for me because I don't know anything about DMA tuning. And I've heard the name. And I saw actually what's funny is I was parking this morning to have breakfast with the interview. And uh, I see the DMA tuning on the back of your car. Yeah. And it was a sweet car. So you're testing your own products. You're Absolutely. running your own products. That's great. But it's a little bit more complex of a business than just a tuning business, yeah. it sounds like. So tell me about the structure of the business and how it originated. We don't normally get into the backstory first. We get into like the fun stuff. But this seems to be kind of the fun stuff. Sure. So uh, DME was originally started in New Jersey um, in 2015. Okay. So... We opened up a second location in Texas, Houston, Texas. Bunch of high school buddies, right? Yeah. Sounds like. Yeah, we all grew up together, all went to Tuning cars. Yeah, I, yeah. It didn't start until 2015. Um, I actually moved from New Jersey to Siesta 2016. Because you saw this show on MTV or what? No, no, no. Um, my dad lived here since 2013, okay. so it was just a change of pace, try yeah. something new. Um, 2018, I went back up there to New York and... Nothing car related. I was a bartender. And then COVID happened, lost my job, moved back down here. And I got a phone call, Lollet, high school friend, the one that started DME yeah, yeah. in New Jersey. You want to start up the Florida location. Shit, I got nothing better to do. I literally had nothing else <laughs> going on. I was like, <laughs> this fell in my lap. I just ran with it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. So, um, you, you, didn't, know, so you didn't drive a, a Mercedes AMG no, before? I, no, I had a Range Rover. So, okay. You know, not but bad. Um, nothing, nothing go fast. Yeah. To, to yeah. be fair, I mean, you also have quite the car background with your dad and stuff. So mm. you can, you know, don't be shy. You can talk about that yeah. too. Yeah. So I remember going to the racetrack since like 10 years old. Oh, so he wasn't calling just a random friend from high school. He no. was calling somebody that is generally a car guy yeah, to start yeah. the car business. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So tell us about that. How'd you get into the car, car um, side of things? So my dad moved to America probably in 97 from Serbia. Serbia. Um, he's always loved cars, but never had the money to do anything with it. He started getting some jobs, making some money. Um, got a race car. I think like 10 years old. I remember what what kind of race car? Like, yeah, like dragster? A, no, or like no. A, something super small, like a Mini Cooper S. Oh, okay. Um, like it was a auto- bumper car. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was autocross. A pocket rocket. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, autocross, yeah, yeah. That's cool. It was autocross. Yeah. So you okay. set up like cones yeah, yeah. in a parking yeah, yeah, yeah. lot and you try to go through them as quick as possible. So it's not really top end speed. Right, right. Acceleration. Um, agility. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Trying to get through it. Um, but yeah, it was great. So I remember 10 years old going to a track with him. That's kind of right like where it all started. Cool. Yeah. And then, um, go ahead, Felipe. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, he when he got off the circuit, he was racing Ferraris, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you it know. went Oh, up. yeah. You skipped that part, Sorry. bro. <laughs> so, so it started yeah, he's just great. My dad, he races Mini Coopers and shit <laughs> in parking lots with little cones. Like, cool. Yeah. It went <laughs> from the <laughs> tampon race. <laughs> <laughs> the tampon. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it went from Mini Coopers and now it's Ferraris. So, okay. Yeah. Big, big jump. But still it, doing it. Still doing it. Right now, yeah, your dad's yeah. still racing Ferraris. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so. Is that like the 24-hour race, or is that like what? Like wh- who, where do you race Ferraris? I'm not So uh, there's a series called SRO. Okay. There's tracks all over the U.S., so um, he races in a GT4 class and a GT3 class. What tunes does your dad run? No, so these cars, you can't touch them. Ah, they got to so be stock. So they're all stock because they try to um, make them as even as possible. Yeah. So you're racing against Level Bentley. the playing field. Yeah, you're racing against Lambos, Bentleys, McLarens. So um, you can't modify them. They check the cars through tech before and after. They see what fuel you're using. 
they um, even plug in a laptop to see like what tune it's it, not tuned. what tune is on it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Which would be the stock tune of the car. All right, because I am unfamiliar, why don't you talk to me as if I'm a child sure. on tuning a car and okay. what that entails? So and sell them on tuning his. Yeah. So say you had uh, let's just pick a Mercedes and your local because that matters. I have a well. Corvette. Uh, we don't do domestic cars. Right. Oh. I have a Mercedes, oh. I have a Mercedes there. Just, just exotic. Uh, we don't. <laughs> just exotic or European. Um, Sorry, your Corvettes can't sit with us, sir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so nothing gets domestic. It's just not what we do. Um, <laughs> say you had a Mercedes. W- w- these cars come severely detuned from factory. So the potential is massive, even on your Corvette. Um, so what we're doing is where a tune removes any limitations. Even on your Corvette. Your Corvette even has potential. To yeah. Believe it or not. I don't know what potential, <laughs> but I, I, I think it has some potential. All right. Um, let's go. So we're, we're removing speed limitations, torque, horsepower limitations. Um, we're also doing little things like we can remove the, we can disable the auto start stop feature. Oh my God. We can remove the top speed limiter. What about the auto stop? Like the, the, like shut the red off, light? Can, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can disable yeah. that. Dude, that is, I hit the button every single yeah, fucking yeah. time I get in the truck or the car. It's like, it's so annoying. Yeah, it's really That's annoying. interesting. So it's, well, uh, what's it cost to remove that uh, stop at the light? We, uh, well, it's part of the tune. We don't like. Yeah. Uh, do you do Range Rovers? We do Range Rovers. Ah, see, I got a car that can be done. Yeah, so. Can it go fast? It can go fast. Yeah? Yeah. Now, what? why does the factory set these detunes up from the originally? Sure. So it's not that it's messing with the longevity of the car or anything, but I don't think any manufacturer is going to put out a car that can go 10 tenths right on the street and say, have fun. Um, yeah, it's a safety thing. I think, liability, yeah, I, liability think, thing. I think more so that like no one wants a car and not saying that's going to have problems after a tune, but nobody wants to like, I get at the same time, I think maybe they want their customers to have fun with the car yeah. too. I'm going to say something that you probably will not say, but sure. it, it's also emissions, right? I mean, we can do this in the great state of Florida because we don't have the kinds of Crazy inspections emissions. that we yeah. have up north. Yeah, we don't right? talk about the EPA. Here. Yeah, you don't like to talk about that, <laughs> but that's for our viewers. I mean, that's that's sure. obviously in the mix. That's why, you know, you guys have locations yeah. here and in Texas, another state with similar persuasions on cars. So. so another thing, say you added an exhaust to your Corvette. Wasn't New Jersey horrible? Aren't they really bad about emissions? They're not bad, but uh, fun fact, the EPA actually removed tuners off their high priority list last year. Okay. So we're no longer You're not a target list. anymore. No Good. longer a target. Yeah, I don't know what they're going for now, but. <laughs> not us. <laughs> Give me another 15 years, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but um, so say you added an exhaust to your Corvette and we removed the cats on it, you'd have a check engine light for not having cats. The tune we can omit get that check that, engine yeah. light. Nobody likes having a check engine mm-hmm. light. You get in like a nice car, people think you're a deadbeat, not maintaining it. So that's no fun. But you're really a street racer. Well, so I'm familiar with tunes from like like uh, buying a tuner, right? Like I, I had a truck one time that had like an edge tuner and it had juice, and then like the thing was a juice attitude, and then there was a hot unlock code that you pay extra for, and this is like you know. I mean, it added like 100 horsepower. What crazy. kind of truck? What's the? It was a Cummins. So that, you, you were you were one of those. Smoke. Yeah, you were yeah. one of those idiots rolling coal every time oh, you saw someone in, in a cooler car than oh what you had. Oh my god, dude! I thought yeah. I was the coolest guy I've ever. Seen that before? Yeah. And it was a manual too, so I was like, whoop, whoop. Yeah, it was. Sweet. I'll give you credit on the manual. You don't see too many yeah, Cummins. Well, like it's that. what I could afford at the time. For yeah, no, that's you know? cool actually. It had a, it did have a um, it did have a bench seat too, so you. You would like Love it. the bench seat. Yeah. Why? So you can keep cozy cuddling <laughs> too close to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like it's shifted, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, so what's the difference between what you do and buying like a, you know, a tuner online for <clears throat> sure. your car? It's essentially the same thing. Um, so say you're in Georgia and you want to tune a Mercedes. We ship you a handheld device. You just need a Windows laptop. So you plug in into the OBD port, mm-hmm. which is underneath the steering wheel, and then you plug it into the laptop. You grab a stock read of the car. And then we modify that stock read, send it back to you, and you install it. So it's it's dummy proof. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, pretty much anyone can Claire could yeah. do this. Morgan could do this. You can't. Yeah, you can't move on to step two without step one being correct. So it's literally idiot proof. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what about what about like your market? I mean, you're local in Sarasota. Are you selling it more locally here, or is it more online? Is it both? Like I'd say, Instagrams are probably our biggest uh, lead form. Um, just organically, you know, like these car videos just blow up. It's right. like crazy. Um, but we also do a lot in like anywhere, like California, Arizona. Well, I understand you kind of run just the tuning side of things. Sure. Why did you go that direction instead of like 
you know, turning the wrenches on, on you know, the other stuff sure. that DME does. Um, I like the social media aspect of it. So I actually like filming the cars after we tune them. And uh, like I said, originally, it kind of just fell in my lap, the opportunity. So I kind of just ran with it, needless to say. Okay. Fair. Um, what's your perfect client? Do you sell a lot directly to the consumer or do you work as like a subcontractor for sure. auto body shops and uh, mechanics? So it's B2B and B2C. Um, we have shops that sell the product for us that also send us leads and we give them a percentage back or we just sell right to the client themselves. So we have both wholesale and retail accounts. Very cool. But you guys primarily serve or only That's serve good money exotic business, right? and European um, cars, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't think there aren't a ton of shops here um, that do that. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't have an exotic car, so. There's a lot know. of shops. One day, Felipe. There's a lot of shops. Know, and even, for example, I was in St. Pete yesterday. We were tuning a Porsche Macan Turbo. Nice. And the whole shop was filled with Mustangs. And he was like, yeah, he's like, I normally do domestic. He's like, but I get these few here and there that I just don't do. So I want him to be able to still make money, whereas I can help him give him, a tw you know, 20% of it. And he doesn't lose the entire sale. At least he gets something from it. Now, does he does he just hand that client over to you and get the kickback, or does he sell this service through his as, under his label? Sure. Uh, either or, because okay. um, it's like about five or six different master tools that I have that they don't have. So, either we'll take a, an additional deposit and ship the tool to them, and then give them the deposit back, make sure we get it back in you know one piece. Or I'll just if it's local, I'll just go there and do it. You know, it just depends, kind of. Gotcha. What, what do you do? So the Instagram, obviously, y you mentioned before, helps you get the clients that are the direct customers. Um, what do you do to try to pick up these shops that may or may not need your services? What's your strategy? So it's actually the same thing. A lot of the shops just all have Instagram profiles. I feel like nowadays, if you run a business and don't have an Instagram page, you're, you're messing up immensely. So Felipe doesn't have an Instagram page. It's different in his business. It's a little different. In his but, business, you don't have to talk to people or, like, you know, meet people or ask them for money or anything. It's yeah. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Na name the number one investment advisor in this town. Nobody can do Felipe. it. Felipe. I can, but, you know, <laughs> can. There's a who reason is, for that. Who it is? Who is it? I'm not going to promote somebody else who's no, potentially a competitor. Point. Potentially. But Michael Saunders. No. <laughs> that's real estate's right. Oh, okay. Though they do good business there. Um, Strong roofing. But why didn't so no, but this, 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 this is interesting, right? We have a great car culture down here in Florida because of the emission stuff and just because, you know, we've got a lot of sun and a lot of flat roads, right? A lot of money. And a lot of money. Right. Dude, I was just talking about this crazy though, because I was literally talking about it with uh the guys I was with yesterday. Like, oh, you know, Lambo's here. You see them on every corner. They're you know, all over the place. I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't, I don't think you see. I don't think it's as crazy as like Miami. Obviously, it's not even close. But like, other than maybe the last three years, you would never see, you'd see one Lambo a month. Let me tell you, you what: know? there's more paid for Lambos here than in Miami. I was going to say that. You know, I feel like that's, the rental that's number one. Yeah, you know? big time. But like, that is. I mean, the, the, when did we become a car community? Because I feel like it's been in the last three to five years. COVID. Not like. Yeah, everybody got bored. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, in Sarasota, I feel like it's a lot of older money and these people that don't really modify cars per se, whereas I'll probably get more leads and more sales from Tampa, Orlando, mm -hmm. even Naples, Fort Myers as well. But I just feel like uh, there's younger people in Tampa that are more open to modifying their cars. That's Orlando. a great point, though, because there may be some people watching this that uh, need to be open-minded about it or can can be like, you know, we can maybe flip them from not wanting to modify to wanting to modify. So yeah. how, what's your, I mean, besides, you know, I'm 21 and I just want to drive fast, right? Like yeah. what, what would be the benefits of modifying your car if you're, you know, Felipe's age and you have an exotic car? <laughs> um, a lot of people get bored with the car. So you just get a brand new car. You love it. You're crazy about it. it. Six months later, you start getting a little bored of it. Yeah. So that's usually where people start modifying it, putting on an exhaust, you know, removing the cats. Um, with the additional airflow of the new exhaust, we can um, change the timing, add more boost, more horsepower, more torque. It'll, it'll literally feel like a brand new car. Fuel economy? Better fuel economy. I'm trying to help you pitch old sure. people, man. You're still pitching so young people. There, there's better fuel economy if it's driven monitor. It's like, dude, it's going to be more louder, chicks. faster, <laughs> more yeah. chicks. Like, dude, I'm, I'm married. Yeah. I got kids. I, you know, I want to be safe. I'm 45, but like, I maybe want to tune. Sure. Talk to me. Um, I always like to tell people if you're looking to maximize every horsepower and torque the vehicle can put out safely, 
we're actually not the company for you. <laughs> okay, there we you like go. to build safe, strong yet conservative files for daily drivers or weekend cars, so you can still enjoy it. I with love that it. Additional. You guys know your target market, yeah. right? Yeah, it's dope. Let's talk about my Range Rover. It's okay. the HST. It's like it's old. It's like three years old. So Supercharged. It is. Uh, yeah. It's the HST. So it's yeah, it's yeah. a supercharged one. I think it comes out of the box like. 395 yeah. or something like that red interior but it, but it, blue interior uh, B- blue suede nice. um and it's i thought good spec. you got you <laughs> rode in it dude what do you mean <laughs> I remember, I remember, remember what you did remember what you did audience. trey almost did way worse to my car than <laughs> than uh than you know yeah. what he had done to his car <laughs> yeah, <a little> hiccup. <laughs> felipe rode in it too he's like very nice car do yeah. you take All the kids proper. to soccer in this <laughs> exactly <laughs> um but yeah, so like, you know, it, it, I had that same experience. I'm like, dude, this is cool. I got a Range Rover and six months in, I'm like, it's not that fast. Sure. It does sound kind of cool. Like, yeah. And I gave it to my wife. How do you, because I love her. Yeah. But how do you, uh, how do you, <laughs> <laughs> because she deserves that. Right? Pass that piece of shit to that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bored of it. <laughs> not like that. Um, Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> New car. I was just thinking of you. <laughs> no, because I wanted to get a truck so we could go camping as a family and that's, right, make right, memories. Right. Family, so yeah. what is, what does the Range Rover look like when you're done with it? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know the exact numbers, but probably be like. Just a ballpark. Yeah, yeah. 60 horse power added yeah added wow. on top 80 torque um you know uh, that's you stupid ever, you freaking ever, auto start feature off yeah we can turn that off remove the top speed limiter if you're trying to get to miami quick or something like <laughs> there that you go. um running drugs you know have you ever been like driving around and hear the obnoxious obnoxious to some people but pops and bangs oh, yeah. the burble tune so yeah, we like also your car yeah, yeah this so, morning so we can actually add additional burble so without Taking the cats out or anything like that? Uh, With stock limited, exhaust? It's limited if stock cats because it's still restrictive. But if it's, you know, stage two, I guess, with um, cat, you know, catless, we can add like a lot more. So can can you like, can I bring my, her car to work one day? Because it's her car, not yeah. mine. I bring it to work one day and then I bring it home like quietly and then she starts it up the next day and it's like, yeah, and she's it like, would. what the fuck? And um, the, cool thing about, that. the cool thing about that is we only add it in like the sport mode. Oh, so, so you can turn it off. Yeah, you can essentially turn it off. Let's so fucking go. So you can choose when you're right, going to be sold. a jerk as opposed to being a jerk all the time. Exactly. I'm so so old for sure. I'm on board. But the yeah. problem is my wife only drives in sport mode. Oh, she's, smart. I mean, she's crazy yeah. like that. smart. So how much does that cost? You sold me. Um, $16.99. Done. We got to do that for yeah. sure. 16 bucks. That's no, it? 17 bucks? $1,699. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So, but like, uh, what does sound bad to me? No, but what what do people no, usually? It's, not, it's for <laughs> your wife. Who, who yeah, you exactly. She's priceless. <laughs> so, you know, we know this is Sarasota. We know there are lots safer. of exotic and European cars here. We know there's lots of enthusiasts who want to get more out of their car. You know, these are all fair assumptions. But like, when people come to you, what do they like? What do they often ask for? Do they say, "I want the burble tune. I want two step." I mean, is burble like is just such a funny word. It's funny. It's literally by person. I say girl. So I can tell. You know who the high schoolers are, and I can tell who or the class. You know, the by class looking on their Instagram. Well, just by what they're asking for. You know, if someone asks me they want a popcorn tune, I can tell they're probably sixteen years old. And, <laughs> I want and a it's popcorn their, tune. And it's their first car, and all they care about is sound and impressing others. Yeah. Um, whereas some people literally say, "I would just want the additional power, no performance you know, tune, yeah, yeah. no burble whatsoever." Yeah. I, that would probably be me. The, yeah. the burble would drive me crazy driving out. Right, there. I would think for the older audience, they hear the burble and they think, "What's wrong with that car? It just backfired." Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> what What's the most expensive car you've done a tune up on? Um, probably a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ Roadster. It's like nine hundred k, right? Yeah, like eight fifty, nine hundred, depending yeah. on the spec, actually. But how I know that, I don't know. <laughs> my friends were talking about it yesterday. That's the only yeah, reason yeah. I know. Sounds I would like, have never. Sounds like George. Now, <laughs> yeah. now, now, yeah. There you go. Now working on those cars. It does it come at a your service come at a bigger price tag depending on the price of the car. That's how we mark it up. Yeah. So like that car was four thousand. Rightly so though, because the risk you're taking and exactly. like you're, I mean you're dealing with a higher end car. Like it yep. should be more expensive to f- even get near it. Yeah. Just I mean at the end of the day, if you can afford the car, you can afford the. Service. Well, and it's also yeah. if you screw up, right? It's a lot more expensive to fix the SVJ than it is a uh, Mustang Coyote, yeah. right? Well, that's a good thing. Mustang though, like Coyote. I, like I, I explained originally, is. though, we're, we're, not, we're trying to push a car maybe eight-tenths of the total limit. We're, you know, there's other tuners that will push a ten-tenths, but it might come with right. baggage. You guys well, are conservative tuners. Yeah. Okay. What liability falls on you guys? Like, I'm sure you have to sign, like, waivers yeah, yeah. or something, right? Yeah, you sign a, yeah. you sign an, um, 
non-liability form. Yeah, because, I mean, otherwise anything breaks on the well, car, you blame it on yeah, the Yeah, but still, the you know, just because they signed that non-waiver, yeah, no liability, it's, 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 just it's not like after the fact if you're fucked. The customer it's a goes, speed. Oh, I understand. <laughs> oh, I know. I signed that paper. I'm not, don't worry about it. We so, know, we're so all that, in this together with it, the risk. Does that happen or what? Uh, we haven't had any issues, believe it really? or not. Really? Yeah. Good. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> not. I'm knocking for you. That's how it's gonna end this up, and it's gonna be in gray, and then like next to like a, an article on the paper, <laughs> yeah. you know, right. of you getting sued. <laughs> yeah, I was told actually that form is pretty much just a speed bump that it wouldn't even really hold anything. Yeah, I know, I figured as much. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing of, of that form is the EPA. So we're saying that if you are going stage two, that it's for off-road use only. Right. Clearly. You shouldn't do this on camera when you're talking about <laughs> where, where did the camera see it? <laughs> they can't see it. It's fine. We'll, we'll blur you out. Lots of air quotes. Off the road. Um, you're also in Mexico when you're driving the car, right? Is yeah. That yeah. The, you know, have, you ever, have, have you, had, have you uh, got any high-profile clients, any cool clients? I wouldn't say anybody crazy. I don't know if you know Ryan Hamilton. No, tell us who he is. Hammy TV. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know Hammy TV, yeah. Yeah, he makes a bunch of videos with funny. his wife. Super funny, funny guy. Okay. He's, he's local, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he's Lakewood Ranch. We've done about three of his cars now. Well, there home. you go. You know what he would do well on? Dude, he's got like millions of He's followers. like six million followers on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Sarasota Speaks, he, baby. Yeah, he's hilarious. People yeah. really like yeah. watching yeah. him and his cars wife. do crazy stuff on, on Instagram, yeah. right? I mean, that's... Yes. Oh, yeah, it takes off. Yeah. Hey, we're having a great time here getting to know Andre from DME Tuning. Stay tuned for this next segment. Rapid fire questions fueled by food and beer. My name is Andre, I own DME Tuning, and this is Rapid Fire. 10 random questions, 10 specific answers, nothing off limit. This is Rapid Fire fueled by food and beer. What's your favorite movie? Top Gun. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! Morning person or night owl? morning. Early bird gets the worm, but who wants to live on worms? If you take it literally, there's got to be something better. We all love grape nuts as a kid. What's your favorite cereal? Uh, I don't think I eat cereal. What? If you could live the life of anyone for a week, who would it be? Probably Leo DiCaprio. Oh, oh. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. What's your craziest impulse buy? Mine was a restaurant. Uh, probably Mercedes, G63. What's your favorite show to binge watch? Entourage. Hey, drama, what's happening? Oh, not much, I thought I'd come by and see my new age. Ah. Whitewater rafting or mountain climbing? Whitewater rafting. Are we alone in the universe? Do aliens exist? Aliens exist. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. If you could instantly become an expert at anything, what would it be? Uh, maybe neuroscience? Break down the old enough components of energy on some constant K rate, extrapolate reach of the. 14 galactic converges to the Sentinel Prime Expedition receiving action. Siesta Key Village or St. Armand Circle? Siesta. All right, Andre. Yeah. Has anyone ever told you you look sort of like John Travolta? Yeah, I actually get it a lot. You get it a lot? That's When's the last time you got it? Uh, these two older ladies. Uh, Cougars, we call those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's looking, he lit up. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably downtown. A few they were weeks nice. Ago. They were nice. Very good. Yeah. More car questions, Felipe. Oh, I got I got Oh, come tons. on. Tons. So I'll, I'll take it, dude. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> The car scene in Sarasota has grown, like I mentioned earlier. And now we have cars and coffee. We have all these car shows, and we have a lot of exotics that we didn't used to see around town. Is that, like, a huge impact on your business? Is that why you started the business? Which one came first, right? Your business or, like, the car scene kind of exploding? Does that make sense? Um, yeah. I think, well, we started, like, around that mid to tail end of COVID. Yeah. So there wasn't anything going on. Right, right. So I feel like it both happened at the same time business started blowing up as well as the community, local yeah. community. How much of what you do is local versus, uh, you know, online? I'd say like 60% is local. Really? And okay. the rest is all remote. So how many, how many, like, there's probably cars that we don't even see that aren't on the streets every day, mm -hmm. like that you get to see because yeah. you're in people's garages. Like what's the, what are the coolest local cars that, or the fastest local cars? Um, 
It's a good <coughs> question. Pro- we've done a lot of Porsches. Those are um, rockets. Yeah. I mean, the, the GT3 RS is so sexy. Yeah, I think uh, the Turbo S is probably the best car. We were talking about Porsches uh, yesterday. It's like they just... They just don't pop with like <coughs> younger, like an older guy. The gas pump is going to respect that Porsche, yeah. but like the young scene doesn't really respect Porsches the way that I feel like Porsches should be respected. Now, what's the correct way to say it? Porsche or Porsche? Porsche, Porsche. No, whatever. it's Porsche. It's it's, it's, it's tomato, por- tomato. I mean, yeah, it's exactly. It's I, everybody says Porsche, but you know, Le Mans, eighty-year-old John is going to say Porsche. John, John, that's okay. going to say Porsche. Is it Capo Pazzo or is it Capo Pazzo? <laughs> but related to that like what what do you guys tune because a lot of tuners you know i watch a lot of car youtube and all that kind of stuff a lot What's of your tuners, favorite one again uh street alpha podcast street alpha. shout out street alpha fantastic tukes you know they're from my neighborhood in queens so that doesn't hurt there you go Long Island. um but uh usually a tuner specializes in like one brand or platform or another you know I mean, what I mean by platform guys is particular make of car like mm-hmm. Mercedes, right, and even right, right. even then like a particular group of years mm-hmm. where they used a certain quote platform, right? Do you guys have any of those that you specialize in, or do you do do you tune one thing more than any other? Uh, anything exotic or European, about twenty ten and newer. But I'd say our most popular tunes that we sell is McLaren and the AMG, probably Porsche uh, third, Lambo fourth, Ferrari yeah, fourth. fifth. I'd say fourth, Ferrari fifth. Well, the the Ferrari is not surprising because there's fewer of those around, right? Yeah, I mean, you could have any car, many. one car. You pick one car right now, no price matters. What are you taking? Uh, the SVJ. Really? Yeah. Okay. Not like a Senna. Oh, I mean, I, yeah, that's just a lot more. I t- I'd take a Senna. It's the price guess, doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. I was thinking something kind of practical. I mean, you're um, the car guy. I don't know cars. I yeah, just think pro- a Senna's probably Senna's are sick. But SVJ practical. That's how you know <coughs> you're in a place with a lot of exotics. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Senna is really just a 720 with you know, it's with, the same with only thing. like 10 of them in, sure. in the country. But, uh, it's the same. Whereas I guess I could say this. You could say the same thing about the SVJ. It's just like an Aventador S right. or a regular Aventador. But I don't know, there's something about that V12 motor. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I think it would be a toss up for either one of those. They're both fucking badass. Yeah. But so I'm surpri- you, but I'm surprised you don't do more <clears throat> AMGs, right? Because there's just more AMGs around. I would think than McLaren, you know, of any type. Yeah, uh, we do a bunch of Mercedes, but McLaren and the AMG kind of have a tie. I think that's because McLarens and AMGs are probably like the cheaper supercars. Sure. Cheaper, you know, five seventies, yeah, like not exactly, bad. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but those are that's a handmade British car. I mean, they don't see, no, I didn't say cheap. They don't make the cheaper. volume that Mercedes makes, period, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, I feel like <coughs> second hand, a lot more people okay. buy 570s okay. and 600s. Yeah. They're around. That surprises me. So what's the fastest car you've ever worked on? <clears throat> fastest. Probably that. Um probably the Porsche, the Turbo S. Yeah. yeah. So when you say fastest, do you mean acceleration or top speed? Because that's always the debate, right? Acceleration. Okay. In a race, yeah, street yeah, race. Oh, some people mean drive. top speed. I mean, some cars are two hundred mile an hour yeah. cars. Some cars are not. But I mean, they might have faster acceleration. Right? Have you ever right. personally participated in a street race uh, in Mexico? <laughs> really? <laughs> you want to tell us that story? How that happened? Um, yeah, I guess uh, we were out testing some cars in Mexico, and we actually got radared at two hundred eight miles an hour. Wow, I don't think I've ever by seen by the authorities or by. A, a, uh, yes. You stand outside your house with a radar gun? I don't know. They're out there testing. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the authorities. <laughs> yeah, it was, five, it was five in the morning we were testing. But um, so literally we were the only cars on the road. Us safe. And the authorities. Very safe. Yeah. Yeah. Safe so, way to do that. Didn't they just um, update the chase rules in, in the area? I, th- I think 160. I just, no, I just heard that there's a new policy. That What's they can, the chase rules? Well, a lot of, usually communities, with the exception of California, obviously we all know about the OJ chase, but most places don't Slow chase. Speed. You know, they don't have, they have a no chase policy because think about what's the upside if you're a law enforcement chasing. Give a someone a speeding ticket. Yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. It's well, like the, the best case scenario, you get a speeding ticket or you lock them up, right? The worst case scenario is you hit some kid crossing the street. So the juice isn't worth the squeeze, no pun intended. I think there's a time and a place <clears throat> for sure. Um, and I, I think maybe the no chase law uh, is more for uh, bikes. Mm-hmm. I don't know about cars specifically. Oh, motorcycles. Yeah, motorcycles. Yeah. So no, since you're see. familiar with the, the the scene around here, I know you would go to Mexico to test your cars, but where would, like, most of the local guys that are, you know, trying to go fast, oh. like, where do they go? Yeah, we go to Brainton Motorsports Park. 
Oh no, like on the streets. Oh, on the streets. Yeah, um, I feel like Lorraine Road would be a really great road to drive fast <laughs> yeah, on. I feel Lorraine, like, uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot of authorities <clears throat> out there. I feel like this is not a good place to drive fast. <laughs> no. Uh, I think six, you know. What street do you live on, Felipe? 75. <laughs> Don't worry about uh, it. 75, yeah. yeah. Just getting on the interstate. Yeah, wherever ripping. you can see, you know, a couple miles down. Um, yeah, because 200 miles an hour is probably. That's insane. Yeah. Obviously, all these cars you know. have laser jammers and, and radars, so that obviously helps. Yeah. I mean, I, I rode a street bike, like, close to 200 miles an hour, and that's pretty scary, but. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think feel that would like be scarier. I feel, yeah. No, the I feel. The thrill of that, though. But like, I feel like it's not as, I feel like it's not a scary one because you can get there faster on a bike. Like, you're, you're 200 miles an hour quick, you know? Yeah, but what if you fall? Of course, that's scary, too, but I just yeah, feel like. Yeah, so that's have, way scarier than, like than, than the easier, car. <laughs> I feel like it's easier to control, though. Like, it's easier to control. It's certainly easier to wreck, too. I feel like you your, your logic is flawed. To, to each their own, but I'll take the Aventador person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have the one with the, the doors and, and, the, and the four wheels. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe even an airbag. How about <laughs> <Yes>. that? <laughs> you know, my, my motto is go fast, don't die. So. Yeah. It's a great yeah. motto. That's not, not the corporate motto. I hope. No. <laughs> more, of a, more of a personal mantra. It sounds yeah. like you're. Uh, sounds like you're living by your motto right yeah, now. You're yeah, here exactly. and you've now, gone fast. So. For now we're good. Where's your favorite spots in Surrey? How long you been here? Uh, since 2020, March 2020. Oh, us. So yeah, yeah been but here you, that you lived here for yeah two, two a little years, while before. three years. Yeah, that's what's what I uh, what's your favorite spots in Sarasota? Uh For what? Just going out, hanging out, whatever. I'd say Food. probably the same four bars with the same 20 people. That's a very Sarasota answer. Yeah. Yeah. So Cascanale, Molly's, State Street. I've really been liking State Street recently. Well, you've yeah. matured. Yeah, well, like that's yeah. what it is. That's, where, that. that's, where, he's, that's where he's running into the Cougars. Yeah. 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 For yeah. disclosure, we've known Andre since the days out on the key when, you know, you probably shouldn't have been going to some of those places, but, no. you know, you were with the right crowd, so you were able to. Yeah, we actually hopped the fence at Gilligan's. Train Felipe was part of the first group of people I met in Sarasota. Cool. So, um, the, you know, probably the, talk about getting in with the wrong crowd, but <laughs> <laughs> or the right crowd because yeah, look yeah. at us now. Yeah, which you know, look, look at exactly. You now. Look at us now. It's, it's super cool to see where we're all at now. Yeah. Sure. So, for a car guy, you you might have a unique perspective on this, it. but uh, Tom Minator Law wants to know what are your thoughts on roundabouts? Do you love them? Do you hate them? I, I think there's a couple. It depends the time of day, and it depends the time of year. So six a.m. nine season, it's fun to the go through like at, go through them at like forty miles an hour, trying to make a straight line, right? Um, as straight of a line as possible. Yeah. Right? Whereas you know five p.m. during season, you have everybody's grandma have, has no clue what what they're doing. They need tunes. So yeah, the grandmas get, need get, tunes. Get, get but they, they don't need their engine tune. They need their brain oil. <laughs> Yeah, hey, listen, to be fair, some people's grandmas drive just fine. I know my grandmother drives great. Yeah. And and so you've been here long enough, though. You you know, you know, you, I, know you, I know you I know you met these guys. <laughs> I know you met these guys first, but you've met some other people since. Maybe elevated your circle of influence and whatnot. Sure. Uh, we always we always like to ask our guests, who do you know that Sarasota needs to hear from? Like who who needs to be on this podcast that uh, you know maybe is known or or otherwise not yeah. known that we can put their message out. Sure. I think uh, two people I have in mind that are business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, Adam Petrelli. Yep. Owns Net Reputation. Definitely. Uh, reputation management firm. They help clean up. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. familiar. We know, we, know, we know Adam pretty well. And then uh, yeah. I'd say Michael Donato, who owns o and Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, a, we've, had, we've gotten that one a couple yeah, times. Yeah, I, I talked to him about filling in one time recently when we had a cancellation, and he said he wanted to, but... You know, he had a scheduling conflict, sure. so we're going to have him on. Maybe not to talk about well, O&A. Maybe, and maybe what, not what does Mike do? What is O&A? O&A Coffee. Coffee. Oh, okay. Coffee. But he's also, like, a, I he's think, a, somewhat of a real estate mogul. He's, well. a, he's a real estate the developer, real estate stuff. for yeah. sure. Yeah. So. I, I, but O&A Coffee is... Best legit. coffee. I'm not even saying that. I really think, you know, I told someone the other day, I'm not, I'm not trying to kiss you, but I really think you have the best coffee. And I'm not even like a coffee Wait, snob. Wait, who are you kissing? I'm not trying he's to kiss kissing, you. He's kissing Michael. Who weren't you? Uh, he's kissing He's probably Michael. kissing Justin, Michael's partner, who's actually kind of the, the operator right, behind right. it. And he's also agreed to be on the podcast again. It's his scheduling, so we'll right. see. So we'll a lot of him. kisses. I'm, I'm we'll a fan him. of that coffee shop, too. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on, yeah, buddy. Problem. Appreciate Thank you. We're going to get to you know your business and yourself. Let's do it.